one game left in the series and the Pirates hope to salvage one against the Phillies here from Citizens Bank Park and for all the fans checking in today I guess they're getting free Phillies hats so I already got one why would I need that <laughs> trying to have some fun here today as the Phillies are looking for a sweep the Pirates are looking to get one game here in Philadelphia in this series and a happy Sunday afternoon to you Joe Block and John Wayner with you here today as the Pirates really trying to get things going offensively that's really kind of been the key this week as the Pirates have slid now five of six they built up that nice early lead here this season now that slipped away some and uh, if they get a win here today they could be back at the top of the division but the bats are, are really the reason why here this week we were all pretty pleasantly surprised how well this offense started the season the first week and a half or so and you knew at some point in time they were going to struggle a little bit and Fortunately, they've run into some good pitching. Um, they've only averaged two and a half runs a game the last six games. And one of those games, they scored 10. So it's been a, a struggle for this team a little bit. Uh, you got to credit the other pitchers some, but the offense definitely needs to make some adjustments. Yeah, two runs are fewer in five of those six games. And, and some of these guys that you know, come off the bench, Pirates do have a deeper bench this year, and they've played well when they've started. It is a veteran bench. It's a guy that, the guys that can hit the ball out of the ballpark. You see Sean Rodriguez, three extra base hits. They're all home runs, the six RBIs. David Freeze has been steady playing sparingly. And the catchers, both of them have done well, but Diaz in the few starts that he's gotten just four so far has hit the ball well. And they'll try to boost Trevor Williams, who gets the ball for the Buccos today. He's been very good. He's 3 0 so far this year, really emerging as one of the game's better young pitchers. Gotta love the way he attacks guys. He comes at them with fastballs, it's deceptive, it's great location. He gets the ground balls every now and again. He'll get a big strikeout when he needs it. The slider comes into play here and there, but I tell you, he goes out there every day, he competes, he gives his team a chance to win, and we need a good one from him again today. And one of the leaders in ERA in the National League, Trevor Williams, going for his fourth win today. The Bucks bats will try to get him there, maybe with some more left turns around the bases. It's the Pirates and the Phillies here from Philadelphia coming up next right here on AT&T Sportsnet.
Hawks trying to turn it around. And a lot of activity here uh, with the hockey game in this complex going on this afternoon as well. First, we'll start with some baseball and hopefully a pair of Pittsburgh wins today. First, the Pirates. They will come to bat their RAV4 lineup for Clint Hurdle's squad today. Sean Rodriguez, again, atop the order, had a leadoff home run yesterday. Polanco and Marte, two and three. Dickerson will clean up with Bell getting the day off. So, Freeze with his first start at first. Moran Mercer, Elias Diaz doing the catching today for Trevor Williams. And they're going to face the young righty Nick Pavetta. 1-0 at 249 ERA in his four starts, 21 punch outs and 21 and two-thirds innings. Opponent sitting just 241 against him. His two walks came in his opening start. The Pirates bullpen just now getting out there as if Pavetta was ready to go. And we just had the uh, anthem completed, so uh, they were pausing to uh, salute the flag and, and uh and watch the proceedings. Now they'll go upstairs and Pavetta will be ready to work. Sean Rodriguez swinging on the first pitch. He hit the second pitch yesterday for a home run that gave the Pirates an early lead. Three homers now. Getting another start. At second base. High breaking ball. Gets a call on the outside edge. Throws fastball, curveball, slider. And Rodriguez down on strikes. Gets a lot of swings and misses, does Nick Pavetta. We have not seen him. Uh, so far and last year based on his numbers you wouldn't know what he's got that uh, the guys behind him will probably not uh, factor too much into this one as the Honda defense for the Phillies Reese Hoskins out of left though Dubal Herrera in center Nick Williams gets to start it right today with Scott Kingery sliding over to third it be Crawford back at short and Hernandez Santana and Knapp and Reese Hoskins all 21 games started over in left field. Yep. Wanted to let us know he was paying attention. Very nice of him. He's got his Google Glass on so he could uh, watch the game while he's playing in left field. Here's Gregory Polanco. It's fastball at 94. It's about what he averages. Touch above that. Nice warm day today, too, so a good day to work. 64. Very spring like sunny. We saw the wind be a huge factor 63 a big part and the uh, wind was a huge factor in the first two games of this series a little bit last night and today doesn't look like it at all. If you like to hit the fastball you probably want to attack Pavetta early and not miss it. Uh, he throws a lot of fastballs the first time through after that. He likes to go soft on you. With that curveball. Primarily, right? Curveball and slider. But to, we'll throw more curveballs, about twice as many curveballs and sliders. He has not allowed a home run yet this year. And it really started coming on toward the tail end of last season. So. Part of this Phillies starting rotation that has been uh, very quietly posting the best ERA in the National League this season. Yeah, isn't that something? I mean, they have pitched. Um, you got the young talent and they pitched very well. And a lot of homegrown guys too. I mean, everyone talking about, of course, Arietta being signed, but the other guys have. We're seeing uh, have been brought up through the organization. And a couple of strikeouts to start for Pavetta. Like I said, a lot of swing and miss from him. 
challenging for the most part. Gregory Polanco there. Fastball. And that's where Polanco likes it. Uh, Polanco has more success with the pitch away than he does in. In fact, does not yet have a hit on a pitch that's been on the uh, inner third of the plate. But he does like the ball out over the plate. Now we're getting a piece of Andrew Knapp. Right in the uh, helmet, kind of, or the uh, mask, I should say, and underneath the, there for a second, dazing him. Yeah, that can't feel good. Andrew Knapp, the young Phillies catcher. Now, Pavetta last season, and remember, this is a guy who had a five and a half ERA, but the fourth lowest amount of pitches put in play against him. The other names on that list in the National League Max Scherzer, Robbie Ray, and Rich Hill. Wow. And he strikes out two in the first inning. And now the Phillies come to bat here in Philadelphia. Guys, how you doing? Some of the uh, dads checking in. There's Richard Williams right there in the center, watching his son Trevor pitch today, and he will face Gabe Kapler's nine that starts with Cesar Hernandez and then Carlos Santana. Starting to heat up. Odubel Herrera is heating up a six-game hitting streak. Reese Hoskins cleans up with Nick Williams batting fifth, Kingery and Knapp six and seven. Pavetta, the pitcher, will bat eighth in front of J.P. Crawford. Trevor Williams coming off his first loss of the season, three and one, a 193 ERA, and that loss he still only allowed two hits, two runs, that is. And Marte able to track that one down. Easy breezy. Got Marte out there, ball carrying a little better today, I think, than we've seen in this series. There's had a lot of wind, a lot of balls getting knocked down with the left to right wind, and. Uh, that ball was hit right on the button. Marte gets a nice jump, takes a nice route, and has a, just enough room. 398 feet, just shy of that 401 marker in dead center. I don't see that happen very much with Trevor Williams since the beginning of last season. The best home run rate among qualified pitchers, you know, starting pitchers in essence. Uh, in all of baseball, or all the National League, I should say. No, no, all of baseball this year. And sometimes it fluctuates. He and Michael Fulmer usually one, two, but mm -hmm. he's ahead of Fulmer right now. So the best in baseball. So to see a ball go to the warning track of the first pitch was eye popping. Even though that fastball isn't always mitt popping, right? I mean, it doesn't, uh, velocity only means so much. Williams usually very good with his command. Yep, and it plays. I don't know if they don't pick it up very well, but it, you know the fastball plays 
a little better than the velocity. And every now and then, if he wants to throw a four seamer right, he can get up 94, 95, we see on occasion. Ray Searage looking on, the Pirates pitching coach. Williams trying to be the second four game winner in the National League. Max Scherzer out there the other night. And a very uncharacteristic start for Williams. A, a nearly a home run ball and then a, a walk. Our pitchers have pitched very carefully to Carlos Santana in this series. And probably not careful enough to Reese Hoskins, who has made the Pirates pay, especially the last couple of nights. Take a look at our Barrel Automotive League leaders, the best batting average against right handed pitchers. And you see in the senior circuit, Odubel Herrera topping that list for now. Only hits 190 against lefties as a left handed batter. So there's a put together a six game hitting streak. We have to give him some credit last night, I've thought, for. Uh, that three run inning the big Reese Hoskins three run homer uh, pretty good at bat put together by Herrera after against the lefty against the lefty brought Santana got just clipped just barely hit just hit the jersey of Santana leading off that sixth inning and Herrera with two strikes reached out at a breaking ball that probably would have ended up hitting the dirt got it through the hole in the right side and that set up the Hoskins three run homer. I put the Phillies ahead for good yesterday. All right, you want to put that one behind them and try to start the roots of a winning streak again. All right, sliding out of first place for the first time since opening day. They have been at first all of April. Herrera lifted, listed at 205. He's 5'11. I yeah, wouldn't think that, right? I would have never guessed. He'd be over 200 pounds. Put together. Has some pop. We have seen that. Former All Star a couple of years back. Moran takes care of that for the second out. That's more Williams like, some weak contact. Usually he's a guy that does rely on his defense much more than his mound opposition. The Pirates have Dickerson, Marte, and Polanco in the outfield. Moran we saw in third with Mercer and Rodriguez in the middle. David Freeze his first start at first this year. And uh, first start since April of last year. He only started two games there last season after uh, back at 16 was regularly over at first. Started there 34 times two years ago. but. Was pretty much the everyday third baseman. Elias Diaz doing the catching today of Williams. Cervelli had started the first three games of this series. And here is Reese Hoskins, who did hit that three run home run yesterday, put a little uh, Philadelphia Eagles panache on that home run trot. Yeah, I thought that was a bit much. Or a go ahead home run in the sixth inning of an for, April game, right? For whatever. I mean, it, it's <laughs> just like, I mean, there's times that unwritten rules of baseball are a little silly. Verlander the other day got upset with a runner stealing a base when it was a 5 nothing game in the fifth or sixth inning. Uh, that's kind of silly. That right there is a bit much. I wonder. You know who noticed if anybody saw it. I mean, we had a comment the other day about a guy flipping his bat. That's every bit as bad as a guy flipping his bat. Uh, it seemed like it was a, a, a scripted uh, oh, maneuver with he and Jose Flores over at first base. Yeah, I would think so. He threw the pass. <laughs> <laughs> it was a big home run in the game, but uh, yeah, baseball. You know, uh, there's. Uh, and I, I'm kind of I do enjoy a lot of the uh, uh, showmanship when 
I think it's just part of the uh, just joy that players show or the enthusiasm that they show on a, on a play uh, maybe a fist pump after a strikeout or maybe a guy uh, pounding his mitt after making a, a good play in the field. I, I'm fine with all that. There's I like nothing that. wrong with showing emotion. Yeah, you, know, I you like can that. throw show some emotion excitement. But the choreography uh, home run thing like that for that sequence I wasn't really grand about that. Williams tidies up the inning with his first strikeout and we're scoreless through one here in Philly. Uh, the other night with the Padres. And now Sean Benaya with the first one of the year. Corey Dickerson will start things for the Pirates here in the second with Freeze and Moran to follow. Bell getting the day off today, so Dickerson in that cleanup spot. No cleaning up to do in this inning. He's the leadoff man, as he was uh, quite a bit for Tampa Bay last year. He was either the number one or norm number two hitter. And uh, talking with him in spring training about it, he said he he prefers those spots because he gets to bat more. Mm -hmm. <laughs> he just wants to get up and hit. I mean, it, you know, I think a lot of hitters probably feel that way, right? The more times I get to hit, the better. Uh, you know, I prefer him in this spot in the middle of the lineup. I agree, right? Because Run producer. He's hitting 500 with runners in scoring <laughs> position. I mean, uh, you know, a, a guy that can excel in the pressure situations, you know, should hit in the middle line. And so far, he has as a pirate. Oh. He pitches about over his head, <laughs> and he ends up. Not only fouling it off, but keeping it in play. How would you judge the kind of at bats the Pirates have had uh, this week, say, prior to the other weeks? This is a unit. Wow, that's like that his eyes. It's crazy. Um, it, it's just hard to say. It, it really hard. I mean, again, sometimes we talked about it in the open. And sometimes it's the opposing pitchers that can can make your at bats look bad. I mean, Arietta you, sinker the other night was exactly. astounding. And so you can't sit there and say, well, there's, they've struggled the last week because of this. Mm -hmm. I, I don't think you can just summarize it just like that. Like, how does the team's at bats look? It, it, because there's, there's so many different factors. Some guys swing the bat better than others. Some pitchers uh, threw the ball very well. Um, and sometimes there are rough nights at the plate uh, for the whole unit or most of the unit, right? 
A lot of times when the entire unit struggles hitting the ball, it's because of the opposing team. It has nothing to do with the, the hitter. Um, you know, in the same sense, there are times where pitchers aren't pitching great and you have enough guys in your lineup that aren't swinging the bats well where you could sit there and say, well, you know, they, they just missed a bunch of mistakes and there was pitches out there to hit. They just didn't hit them. And, and when you have a, you know, let's just say you have three or four or five guys in the lineup that aren't swinging the bat well, then you might be able to sit there and say, well, it's the, the hitter's fault. Yeah, it's part of the ebbs and flows of the game. And like you said, I mean, the, the Pirates, the way that they hit that first dozen games, uh, you can't hit like that for a long stretch. They were uh, really, really good. I mean, the whole team was batting like an all-star player, averaging six and a half runs a game. Bell gets a day off today, for instance. Just trying to get everything reset. Game number 22 of the season. I mean, every now and again, you'll face a pitcher that you know you kind of know what he has to offer, and, and you know what he is trying to do to you. I mean, there might be a pitcher that's out there that's trying to get you to chase. Now, if you go in there and and, and you know a guy doesn't want to throw it over a plate and he's trying to get you to chase, and you go out there and chase, well, then I'll point the finger at the offense and and not making adjustments and doing exactly what you knew the pitcher was going to do. Mm -hmm. And there are times like that where, like, man, what were they thinking? But most times it's the opposing pitchers that are just doing a great job of hitting their spots, making you miss. And the Phillies starters leading the league in ERA and so far two scoreless. Brought to you by the law firm of Bordas and Bordas. Bordas and Bordas, fighting for justice. And by Day Automotive, we're gonna make your day. Let's go, Bucks! Trevor Williams to Nick Williams. One pitch, soft ground ball, and one out. It's not flashy, but gets the job done. Uh, maybe uh, making his way uh, across this complex here. They've got the uh, football stadium, hockey, and basketball in one arena here, and then baseball, all part of uh, one complex. A sprawling venue here in Philadelphia, and uh, it's very nice for fans that might be attending uh, both games today. See a lot of black and gold making their way here over the weekend. Six this afternoon. Game four of this series. 
It is not an elimination series, thank goodness. The Pirates trailing three to nothing in the frame. And uh, the Phillies have not swept the Pirates since 1994 in a four game series. So trying to change that today. And the, uh, look at the lowdown. Everybody excited about a pair of Pittsburgh wins today. And Williams, after a shaky first couple of batters, is really got right back on track. Pounding the strike zone with the fastball. And he throws a lot of fastballs. I mean, 73% of the time. Highest percentage among starters in the National League. And that's why no surprise that they've come out swinging. Hernandez first pitch swing Nick Williams. First pitch swing. Andrew Knapp. Switch hitting Phillies catcher. Williams with a pair of strikeouts. Not really a big strikeout pitcher per se. Like you said, I mean, you're throwing the fastball so much, usually uh, you don't think of that as an out pitch, but Williams says that his sinker, that is his out pitch. That's, that's what he's using to finish off hitters, too. It starts hitters, finishes hitters. Yeah, I like the way he changes speeds with it. But there, he more of a sinker, had more run away from the left handed batter. In your opinion, does he have an, kind of an advanced feel for reading swings, for pitching? I mean, Clint Hurdle said the other day he rubs up a baseball like he's 38 years old. And just, he does have that feel of, of someone that's been around a lot longer than he has. Yeah, I mean, I, I think he's confident in his stuff. I, I don't think he has any reservations as to, you know, um, his fast not fastball not being hard enough or his breaking ball not breaking sharp enough. I think he just likes to do that. Come at you. That that's not you know, painting. That's three fastballs down the middle that went by now. And he's got three strikeouts through two scoreless. Apparently, a team of bats signed it for him before the game, and creating a memory that will last a lifetime. That's really nice. Dad tweeting that out. If you would want to tweet something out, hashtag Bucks Booth. We'll work that in as we move along here this afternoon. Just really, really nice to try to delight somebody, make their day. That's a nice souvenir. I 
I can't do that as well. If you want a bat, just tweet Jordy. <laughs> Look at his notification and be oh boy. <laughs> what did I get myself yeah. into? Tweet Jordy, leave your address. Yeah. Be in the mail on Thursday. No. Every now and then pick out somebody and might be able to do something like that. Pavetta with an easy 96 up in the zone. And no disrespect to uh, Ben Lively who got the start but the, the other three to be sure uh, pitchers uh, that the Pirates have faced in this series they have some outstanding stuff we know about Arietta who looked like the Arietta of old uh, Aaron Nola really came on the scene last year and has emerged as one of the game's better pitchers and this you know I, I didn't know a lot about Nick Pavetta's first time we've seen him but all the peripherals suggest that you know he's on his way to kind of being like what Nola did last year and move into the next stratosphere well, after well, a bumpy first full season last year. Well, the fastball is lively. No pun intended. No pun intended. <laughs> the curveball so far very sharp. And he's got four strikeouts. So I tend to think you know that Miami series. Uh, Facing some of those uh, soft tossing, you know, control pitchers. As Diaz wraps a base hit. I don't know how much they uh, did versus, you know, say the Pirates' bats were just kind of screwing themselves in the ground, I thought, a little bit uh, with, against those guys. But here in this, uh, you know, Marquez was very good on Monday for Colorado, I thought. Uh, Pirates were able to get to Freeland, who was not very good on, on Wednesday, and they got to him. And then uh, we saw here in this series, I think three out of the four guys that they faced show some really good stuff, yeah. really good command. As was Bettis. I mean, uh, Bettis, Bettis, I skipped uh, over Bettis. Uh, yeah, Bettis, Bettis I thought, um, you know, with his assortment of pitches and movement, kept the hitters off balance. But yeah, it's, it's again, it's. Um, some of it's a slump. Some of it is running into good well, pitching. If you're if you're swinging, if, if if your team is swinging the bat well, and you face these guys, I, I think you score more runs. You know, I mean, it, it's a lot of that. There's a combination of things. I mean, there's certain teams you'll face that get hot with the bats, and it doesn't matter how well you pitch, they're going to hit. As any hitter will tell you, I mean, when you're locked in up there, and you have several guys in your lineup that are locked in, you could make good pitches, and and, and you're they're going to get hit. We saw some of that with the Pirates uh, that first dozen games. They weren't facing all uh, poor pitchers either uh, in that time. They were able to defeat some of the best. And look, you know, if the Pirates are going to be uh, a contending team, we're going to have to see more nights than not where, even if they do face good pitching, they're able to hit them some. Yeah. I mean, I think we just saw that recently. Um, the Cubs, for instance. The Cubs, mm -hmm. you know, as a team, weren't hitting well. And then all of a sudden, everybody's hitting well. Uh, they went from barely scoring to putting up like 13 or more I think for three three or four straight days. Every team's goes through it as Williams is out and that's a mistake. And, and when you're not swinging the bat well you, you can't make mistakes like that and you can't give extra outs on defense and you can't give outs on the base.
First, can you figure this one out for me, Rock? Yeah, I mean, I, 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 my only guess is he was anticipating the bunt getting down. I mean, you know, it's one of those things where, especially as a catcher, a catcher, you're looking for that. When somebody, when some, every every catcher, when there's a pitcher up there bunting, and especially you see it more with a runner in second base, and, and you see the attempted bunt um, not pulled back and they bunt through the baseball, the catcher wants to come up and fire every time. And, and so that's why that's so shocking that Diaz got caught crossing over. I mean, he anticipated the ball being bunted. He, he anticipated the ball going down, and so he wanted to get a good jump. But you can't do that. I mean, you have to allow the bunter to execute the bunt before you start heading towards the next base. And so that ended the inning. Doubling down on the missed bunt. Williams back to work trying to hold him and he gets out his opposite number Pavetta already four strikeouts for Williams. Pitcher batting eighth for the Phillies today. Saw that a, another time in this series too to bat ahead of Crawford who has not really batted well so far in his very little big league time but they really like him he's a you know, highly rated prospect that has a little speed and you can I guess kind of couple him with Hernandez in front of Santana you know uh, if the pitcher makes a final out right then the kind of have a second lead off hitter sometimes that could be the philosophy but not good enough to have him bat ahead of some other guys. I can't tell you that that's right or not I don't that's like it. a theory. I don't know if it's the right one. But. Hey Sundays are kids days at PNC Park. Join us next Sunday when the Pirates host the Cardinals at 135 and all kids 14 and younger will get a mini bat. Thanks to Highmark Blue Cross Blue Shield together with Allegheny Health Network. Go to Pirates.com slash kids days. Come on out. Pirates will be returning home beginning three game series against Detroit on Tuesday and then three game weekend set against the Cardinals. Phil's fans looking on here as the Phillies have the first three games of this series. See how the Pirates respond to their first extended adversity. You got some good pitching from Brault yesterday. Two runs that they gave up were the inherited runners that came across as he was pulled in the sixth. But I wonder if it's more. Uh, when the team isn't really there's Stephen Brault. When the team isn't really hitting all that well. Uh, if it's tougher to pitch or you have to be more mindful does it change anything. Do, is it the same. I wonder uh, in the mentality of a, a pitcher what that's like. Well I, I would think it'd be easier to pitch with a bigger lead. Um, the main reason being you don't have to worry about making a single mistake that is going to cost your team. Uh, um, you know, you're up four or five, nothing. I mean, you're up there just pitching. I mean, like I, I was thinking about this with Trevor Williams, just going through the the top of the order where you have some guys with power. And and and, and I'm sitting here thinking to myself, with the way Pavetta started this game and and the success he's had keeping the ball in the ballpark, hasn't allowed home runs, he doesn't walk people. Um, he's been incredible against right handed batting. Um, you know one mistake in this little ballpark could cost you a game the way the offense is and so I would think it would be difficult to go up there and pitch that way and then for some it might make make them focus more thinking I can't make that mistake so I will be I, I will have uh, more conviction with every pitch I throw Santana showing a bunt. Power hitter with two outs. Oh, for Williams, and perhaps this may be like this today. We saw him in that outing, his first outing of the season against Detroit. 
He no hit him through six innings but walked five. And asking him after that start he said you know I just didn't want to give in to some of their better hitters. He was uh, you know at certain times in that game. Santana Bunning again. And Williams coolly gets the out. All we can do is bunt it hard. <laughs> bunt it hard it's a hit. interactive experience where people can do this. They can shoot plastic hot dogs at targets. This is very similar to what the Philly Fanatic does during games when he shoots real hot dogs into the stands. There's also a little wiffle ball field like a replica of Citizens Bank Park. I took Pirates pitcher Stephen Brault and his father there, Joe and Rock, and we'll have more on that coming up in just a little bit. Uh, I'd be interested to see that. Thank you, Robbie. I didn't know that that was here. I, I didn't see that. Maybe it uh, fairly new, but uh, you ever think you'd see that? Where you go to a ballpark and pretend to shoot a hot, hot dog through targets? <laughs> That's pretty fun. Fun, fun yeah. yeah. And get ice cream. Folks didn't run, really want ice cream the first couple of nights of this series. That is a beautiful afternoon. And Pavetta with that breaking ball, uh, fastball combo. Has been catching the Pirates in between quite a bit, striking out five the first time through the order. Rodriguez among the victims, his first time. Yeah, you can tell kind of an approach of Sean Rodriguez. Being much more aggressive up into two strikes. Saw it in yesterday's game as well. And it swung in a couple pitches out of the strike zone early, got the two strikes, and then um, kind of, of a two strike approach. Tells yourself, I'll oh, see it longer. Make sure it's a strike. And that's the first walk issued by Pavetta. So now that the Pirates have had a look, we'll see how he does second time around. Everybody facing him for the first time. We've got the lowdown and uh, Carlos Gonzalez of the Rockies. Remember, he strained his right hamstring on that diving play back at PNC Park. Finally placed on the DL today. Glaber Torres, who uh, many consider one of the top prospects in baseball, the Yankees have him batting eighth. He'll debut at second base today. Over Cub Farmhand came over in the oldest Chapman deal. Polanco had the longest at bat against Pavetta, seven pitch sequence. His first time around. 
Well, you mentioned uh, first time through the lineup, Pavetta throws 72 and a half percent of his pitches are fastball. Second time through, only 54 percent. Golfed out to left, but Hoskins able to secure the first out. And then if Pavetta gets through the third time, 41% of the time he throws a fastball. So he, the more you see him, the more soft stuff you're going to see. Is that kind of the uh, the, the usual recipe? Uh, you know, establish the fastball that first time and then try to mix stuff, or is it? Does that seem like more of an extreme to you? That seems extreme to me. I mean, you go from a power guy the first time through to a, a thumber. The guy <laughs> just flips stuff up there by the last time you face him. Pirates Brain Trust looking on. Marte bounced out his only trip. No, when when you see a a batter do that when they're looking at signs and and then they go back in and they step out if there was something on it's no longer on when you're looking at signs and they put something on you get back in the batter's box and, and you're and you're ready to hit and then you're like well time on time out I gotta go see the signs again yeah if there was something on then it's basically off now because it's told the other team that there was something uh, on probably It's almost as if like you know it's the same thing if uh, if you have a runner on first base and let's just say you put the steal on and and you know the pitcher throws over and you and you may be flinched to go like you were going to go almost the same thing and then they take it off. Rodriguez started and stopped. Not all the time but most of the time. Maybe a hit and run one one with one out right. Yeah, that would be the only reason. I mean, Marte to be concerned about signs. I mean, as a hitter, you don't worry about any signs other than a hit and run in this situation with one out. I mean, if it's Inside heat. Six Ks for Pavetta. That pitch way off the plate inside. Uh, looked like a fairly straight fastball. It looked like a, a two seamer that kind of chased him in there. It just looked like a four seamer that was off the plate. Dickerson fouled out his first time. Still hitting over 300. Pacing the Pirate regulars. Dribbling away, but not enough for Rodriguez to advance. My guess is it hit Sean. Right in the backside, it looked like. Neither team has yet had a man in scoring position. Kind of what we anticipated at least early here with the Williams and Pavetta both. Really good at limiting. Home runs. And so far this year also. Good at limiting extra base power. Marte was upset. That he had swung at strike three. Still is. By the looks of that head shake. Well, wouldn't be surprised to see Corey Dickerson let it fly here 3 0. Well, had walked two batters all year in his first four starts. He's walked one in the inning. 
Castro set up away. And he's walked two in the inning. Equaling his season total. Coming into today. Really a couple of non competitive pitches in that uh, sequence, but uh, Dickerson taking a couple of borderline offerings. All fastballs from Pavetta. David Fries in there today at first base. First chance with men in scoring position, or a man in scoring position. Uh oh. It goes right into the Pirates dugout. And that was a curveball and, and that was pretty nasty and uh, David freeze a little bit out in front. Let it fly. And that happens from time to time with freeze. He likes to have his hands dry wears the gloves but likes his hands dry doesn't like a lot of. Uh, pine tar attack on the on the hands there so. Every once in a while, the bat will come loose. Two on, two out. Best chance so far for either club. Freeze has done a little bit to try to avoid hitting the ball on the ground as much. Well, that's a good curveball. I mean, hard and sharp. A lot of downward break. Watch it disappear. It just looks like it's right there for you, then breaks under the bat. And the fastball. And Nick Pavetta has fanned seven. And yeah, the Pirates strand two. Toyota all-wheel drive RAV4 thinning. Toyota, what drives you? Here in Philadelphia, they remember lefty Steve Carlton and Robin Roberts, and the old Wiz kids. Back in the uh, 1950 season, it was an uh, old pirate catcher by the name of Connie Mack was the skipper of the. 
Philadelphia A's here and uh, Philadelphia Jim Constanty. Uh, finally, the Phillies were starting to be the known club in Philadelphia. The A's were the predominant club for most of that first half of last century. Great baseball history in Philly, which uh, for uh, think about it, uh, they still really revere that 1980 bunch that won it. Here and Bob talk about all the attention that he still gets just milling around town here, and then uh, of course they won their second title in 2008. I just checked by the way with the truck to see what that first pitch was, because it looked like a curveball. There's Bob. Bob threw curveballs. <laughs> yeah, uh, that was the first curveball that Williams has thrown this year. Yeah. He th he has one. He wants he throws it as a first pitch. Get me over free strike. Once I just, in a that, great that, while. It's fascinating to me that he just threw a curveball for the first time this year, and it was a beauty. That's all he uses it for, and he hadn't used it yet. Yeah, all year. Soft liner and one out. Just a get me over strike once in a blue moon. I think he threw it. Um, well, what I got was he threw it two percent of the time last year. And boy, that's a good one. And a good, good pitch to throw on a, a bunt attempt, right? Yeah. I mean, Herrera obviously a, a pretty good hitter. Came in hitting 338. Um, I doubt that Trevor expected him to bunt. But just figured, well, good hitter will give him something different to look at. Throw a curveball in there. I just, I, did, I like watching Williams. I mean, just his feel for pitching. I think we all like the guys that throw really hard. Uh, they're fun to watch too, but he's fun in a different way. When you just watch him try to pick apart hitters, see a weakness. He studies the scouting reports like other pitchers, but. He's watching what happens within the game and then altering that as they go. And there's Dad Richard. He's always on pins and needles when he watches his son work, keep scoring. He looks like a scout, doesn't he? What well, dad isn't a scout, right? <laughs> he walked in. Well, Robbie was talking with him uh, for his first start back in Detroit. And he had had a no hitter going. Uh, Halfway through the game, he wasn't going to go nine innings. Dad knew it, Trevor knew it, Glenn Hurdle knew it. Uh, but still, the, the level of focus from Richard at that time was quite evident. Seemed like he was a little distracted talking to Robbie. I was kidding Richard with about that the other day. What? <laughs> that was called ball four. What was that? I mean, we had, I mean, Nick Lentz behind the plate this afternoon. Yesterday, the, the, the strike zone was floating. It was all over the place. Balls called strikes, strikes called balls. Everybody worked up about it. That pitch, uh, where was that pitch? How can an umpire looking over the inside part of the plate say ball and, and give an explanation to anybody why that was a ball? Last night's catcher was not happy with the zone. Nick Lentz, a call-up umpire. First one that raised an eyebrow with us today. But uh, yeah, last night it was a, a, an erratic zone, which happens from time to time. With the Lance Barrett working the dish last night. Sometimes umpires have off nights too. What's more shocking about that pitch being called a ball? Hoskins acted like it was a ball. <laughs> he just ran down the first. Maybe he sold it. Sold it. <laughs> I'm thinking the way he's swinging the bat, he doesn't want to walk. Yeah. I mean, for him, I, I'm surprised he, he didn't turn and argue with the umpire. Like, what was wrong with that? <laughs> Give me another chance to swing it. Jeez, here we go again. I don't get so worked up over borderline pitches like that, but that one was clearly, a, especially on the call ball four like that. Well, I, you know, I yeah. do in, in a sense. I mean, pitchers have great arms now, and you know, you see the velocity. Um, the, the strike zone just seems to shrink 
smaller and smaller each year. And so I do feel a little bit bad for him. It's, it's like, you know, what do you got to do to throw, throw a strike? Bob's rubbing off on you. Oh no! I mean, it's just my <laughs> my eye test. Nothing to do with Bob. It's just watching the, the the strike zone seemingly shrink year after year. Well, I think uh, if if that is the case, uh, you know, baseball has talked about pace of play. That has been a, a huge emphasis, and it's not necessarily time of game that is the issue, although that is talked about. But how? Quickly, the game is played. Pace of play. I think that's more the emphasis, or should be. And when the ball is not put in play, that slows the game down. And it has not been put in play more year after year after year, every single season for years and years and years. More walks, more strikeouts, more home runs. Ball's not put in play. So. I don't know how you tweak that to make it work, but. I don't think you can tweak that to make it work. That's you the problem. basically have more and more home run hitters that that's why you see the shifts. That's why you see you know the, the, the strikeouts. That's why you see pitchers avoiding probably throwing more strikes right. I mean guys go up there and they swing and miss a lot. Foul a lot of balls off. They don't put as many balls in play I think because the swing is bigger longer. More holes in it. On 3 2, Hoskins moving and a great throw to nail him a double play. Elias Diaz throwing out Hoskins trying to steal. And a strike him out, throw him out, double play. care of the rest and a lot of times you send the runner with a full count to stay out of the double play every now and again you end up with the double play as uh, Hoskins went in very awkwardly he's looking in all the way with the full count uh, and uh, you can see they're out by a mile and uh, probably should have just went to committing to a slide as you can see the Allegheny Health Network super mo shows you I think Hoskins lucky to still be in the game. I mean, that could have been ugly. Makes you appreciate Josh Harrison. You know, I think probably what was going through his mind, how do I get around this? I'm going to be out by a mile. How do I get around this? Josh Harrison finds a way to do that sometimes. Yeah. You know, with uh, taking one arm back, sliding around. Driven by Moran. But hanging up there for Hoskins, one out. That's a good at bat, good hard contact. That ball just sliced right back to him. Let's take a look at our day automotive. This day in Pirates history. Got to go back two years ago. Pirates beating the Diamondbacks 8 to 7 and three home runs, three long home runs in the game. You could 
debate which one was the farthest. All were hit 450 feet or more. And uh, certainly tape measure blasts that you'd want to go and check and see how far they were after the game. That's how long they were hit. Mercer part of that bunch. Bob was um, a little worked up over that. He just calmed down this. last week about yeah. that. Finally, in fact. Well, the uh, the fun part about that was uh, because they were also far hit. Uh, Rodriguez and Mercer hit them both out to left, and one was called I forget which. One was called a, a few feet more than the other, and, and Bob contended it should be the other way around. So he went out, and kind of did his own. Vlog of uh, <laughs> vlog of uh, the sequence. I think he broke his bat on that. Kind of hosted his own show out there in left field in Arizona. If, if I was a, a position player in Arizona, I'd lobby to have that roof open because that roof was open that night and that ball was going just flying out of there. Putting the uh, panels open too sometimes helps there, but trying to dumb down a little bit of that jump out in Arizona this year, adding a humidor for this season. And uh, some of the physics professors think that that's going to drop the home run totals by a quarter to as much as half. There's extra bases for Mercer. And he is. At second and will yield there the first extra base hit of the game. Jordy Mercer wraps a double. I understand the thinking of the pitcher Nick Pavetta as he threw a fastball in on the hands of Jordy Mercer and broke the bat. So let's throw a curveball. But he left the curveball up middle half of the plate and Jordy Mercer crushed it. I mean, and Jordy almost, you know, as a hitter, you get jammed that badly. You're thinking, well, He's probably going to try to do it again, so you might start cheating with the swing. And I think that was Pavetta's thinking. Figured out throw a curveball and get a chase, but I don't think he wanted to throw it there. And so a chance with the man in scoring position. Now Diaz, and normally this is Mercer's role, right, as the eight hitter, but Diaz batting ahead of the pitcher. This is kind of the big spot, right? It's a tough place to hit just for the simple fact that you don't know if you're going to get a Strike with the pitcher behind you. But boy, did he ever get a, a strike, a, a slider that didn't break a whole lot right in the middle. Diaz sends it out to left. Hoskins turning around and there it goes a two run home run for Elias Diaz. Pirates score first today they're up two to nothing. This is impressive stuff that we're seeing from Diaz not getting to play a whole bunch. This is fifth start. Two home runs now four RBIs. Hitting almost 500 and this breaking ball look where it is it's way in off the plate. Another breaking ball that somehow Diaz able to keep his hands inside it. <laughs> and, and barely pulled it I mean that's in left center field. Most batters it'll swing at a breaking ball that's in off the plate. We'll hit it a mile foul. He had 393 feet. He has done a great job in a very short period of time uh, off the Pirates bench. We were talking about that when we began the broadcast today. 474. The batting average for Diaz. And in that critical spot, in that eight spot in the order, not only driving in the run, but himself as well. Boy, yeah, that, uh, that's a big boost right there. It's you see it. Well, he, he just uh, opened up the hits, hips and just blocked that ball and it really pulled his hands in. Well, he's got a little bit more open stance. He, he added that little leg kick. He feels like that has kept him more balanced. We saw him driving the ball again. 
uh, occasionally at least in spring training which for a long time last season he he did not do that and we saw glimpses of it before but he had that big night in New York against the Mets on June 2nd last year he drove in six he homered he did not hit a home run with the Pirates or Indy the rest of the season and slugged something in the low 200s I mean it was no power from Diaz and that was surprising to see that and well, the reason there was no power he just wasn't hitting ball. you know it's right I mean, I mean, he, he, the power was still there he has still the same power this year as last year and it, it just didn't, when you're not up there making solid contact right. there's going to be no power right so, no solid contact yeah. or very little and but man uh, this guy's not easy to hit either as far as uh, home runs that's the first home run he's allowed in 40 innings going back to last year I mean that's uh, some note right there yeah the, to be exact the 41 and two thirds coming into this inning. Rodriguez homered yesterday. And Santana has enough room. Oh, that's a good play. Stayed with it. But the Pirates have the first laugh so far today. First home run allowed by Nick Pavetta. Alias Diaz with a pair of hits today and a big one. A big blast and putting the Pirates up to nothing here in the fifth. Pirates two, Phillies nothing on our UPMC scoreboard. Alias Diaz with the home run. And Trevor Williams has allowed three base runners. All via the walk. He has struck out five fills. Down the line for Dickerson. Just out of his reach, leaping. That sloping wall out there. A little room out there in foul ground and left, but looked like it hit just on inside of the railing. On the other side of the yeah, railing. Just yeah, just a couple of feet. Might have had a play if it was on the other side of the railing. That was really close. Would have been really a tough catch to make. That fan is happy. Nine 
ninety one by him. Good location. Yeah I wouldn't I mean. I wouldn't say he's had his best location. Today. I mean, a lot walked, of middle middle. Yeah, pitches, he's right? missed, again in and out of the zone. I mean. There was times where he got strikeouts throwing the ball down the middle. Um, and other times obviously with the three walks. Whether he's trying to be careful or just missing. But when you look at the five punch outs three walks. And still just 58 pitches here. In the fifth. A little pause and hesitation. And right there right down the middle. <laughs> 93. And this is a good hitting bunch these uh, Phillies. Watch the pause here. And you wonder as he's pausing is he thinking like where do I. I just, uh, uh, <laughs> do I just want to throw it harder. What am I going to do. Kingery flies out to start the fifth. And let's look at our Allegheny Health Network injury update and uh, Joe Musgrove throwing his bullpen session today here at Citizens Bank Park and uh, the plan for him is to throw a simulated game at PNC Park on Wednesday and then if that goes well uh, he should move toward a rehab assignment as he looks to join the Pirates rotation he was uh, all set to go and then uh, reported that uh, that discomfort pain uh, had uh, reoccurred again and so uh, right shoulder muscle strain the official reason to be on the DL but uh, just as just as the season started. So you have is having more trouble. Than usual recovering from a start that he made down to Pirate City. Which was supposed to be his. Last. Start and then join uh, the rotation in turn but. Uh, simulate a game on Wednesday and then uh, Musgrove might be get, getting closer to coming. And making his first appearance. Hmm. I'm missing with four straight there. And if I'm not mistaken, I think it was Knapp who Trevor Williams threw three fastballs by in the middle of the plate and uh, started him off with three straight off speed pitches. And then a two seamer he missed away. It's an interesting sequence. Well, like you said, uh, you know, it looks like his command hasn't been as, as sharp as it normally has. Today, maybe just. Uh, he just lost him. Not bunting. Pavetta. Dave Kapler, the rookie manager of the Phillies. Batting the pitcher in the eighth position. An 094 career hitter. Doesn't look like it. Wow, that's extra bases. And Knapp, a catcher, rumbling around third. Rodriguez's relay is late, and it's an RBI double, the first career run batted in for Nick Pavetta. They say the Phillies are unconventional. That surely was, and it paid off. And it just looks like he's trying to put it in play. Play gets a fastball up and out over the plate. And it's the chalk. Just fair. And you see there the throw from Polanco. I'm sorry. You got to run around first. You got to let that ball go. I mean, he just flips it in there. If he lets that ball go and gives Rodriguez a strong throw. Look how close the play is at the plate. I mean, he barely beats the well. throw. Yeah, you gotta let the well. ball go. You don't just casually flip it in. <laughs> Especially the way the runs have been hard to come by for the Pirates. I mean, every run feels so important as the Pirates look to salvage one game here. 
So the first hit off Williams is by the opposing pitcher, which was a fastball at 89 right down the middle. Knapp scores from first, and now J.P. Crawford. This is the first time that the Phillies have batted with a man in scoring position today. And the pitcher Pavetta is going to be able to advance. Not far enough away from Diaz. In position that a fly ball can tie it now. Man, yeah, that just came up on him. That's a big 90 feet. Well, with the bottom of the order up, and once Williams got through Kingery, started to feel pretty good about this inning. But Pavetta, the pitcher, batting in the eighth spot, doubling, wow. the third on that wild pitch, and that not being called a strike. That's a big swing from 2 1 to 3 0. Oh. There's a couple of pitches now, and one this inning, one the inning before that was inside <laughs> that rectangle. Not on the edge, but inside it, not going for Trevor Williams. That's walk number five. Now, I'm probably most troubled by the, the walk to Nap. Um, yeah, you know Trevor, Trevor really Williams. Non-competitive pitches. He fell behind Nap three-one in the second inning, and threw two fastballs in hitters counts three-one, three-two, and, and blew them by him, and they were right in the middle of the plate, and then and, and then that at bat with after the out on the line out to center from Kingery, he went slider changeup changeup to fall behind three and zero, oh, and then missed with a two seamer. So that, that, that's what's kind of um, strikes me as a little bit odd was the, the slider change up change up after the previous at bat. They're going uh, away from the fastball something that you pointed out Williams obviously goes to more often than any other pitcher in the league. And Knapp a career slugging percentage of 343 in his brief career so not a big power Yeah exactly guy. Not, not a big power guy. Um, I know the pitchers behind him but still I mean that ended up coming back to hurt as Pavetta hits the ball off the foul line uh, not getting a call against Crawford another hitter not hitting the ball very well and batting ninth. Yeah, you get that to two one and then you can have some wiggle room there. But it is what it is runners at the corners here it's holding on to a one run lead and belted by Hernandez. But foul. He crushed the first pitch he saw from Williams back in the first inning and lined out to dead center field just shy of the wall. Williams worked around him the second time that it came up. He's squaring him up pretty good, even though he's fouled off the pair here. And Hernandez not a big power hitter either, but a little bit more punch than Nap. Certainly gap power and some good wheels. And tough to turn two on. Williams likes to get that ground ball. Maybe this is where he tries to go for it, low in the zone. You know, I would think that he's trying to pick up another strikeout in this situation. Pop up would work, but that won't stay in play. A moment ago, you pointed out Williams' pitch count was. Uh, and I'm moving right along. I think it was a 58 or 59 after one out in the inning. But already a 20 pitch inning. Needs a quick pair of outs. 
Yeah, you know, you, you think with the way you, you look at the bottom of this lineup today and after getting that first out, Kingery, I mean, you, you hope for a quick, efficient inning. And instead, the Phillies have played it a run so far. And now it's two and two on Hernandez. With more power due to follow. So. Uh, Carlos Santana. You wouldn't know it by his bunt try last time around, but uh, big slugger. Fouled away again. And that fastball off the plate in. Slider. Diaz wants it in the dirt. Got it low, but enough for Maybe. Hernandez. And Pavetta, the pitcher, is tagging, and he's going to score. And the Phillies have tied it. Not low enough. Hernandez with a sack fly and 2 2. And the way Diaz was pointing, he was like almost pointing, like, let's get this ball in the dirt in front of home plate. And it ended up being a strike in the zone and, and just far enough as uh, Dickerson sets up nicely behind it and then gets off a fairly accurate throw. A big, lanky, six foot five Pavetta just beats the throw. So that sequence, well, that's going to move Crawford at least a second. He's going to go for third. And it hits off the mound, and no one is standing at second. That would have had him in a pickle. And that would have been a long, long run for Marte. He was already playing deep in center. I don't know if he would have been able to get there. Back up the play. So just a straight E1 moves up Crawford, a base. Yeah, it's um, I guess just out of the reach of David Freeze. Freeze has gotten very little uh, work over at first base, where he played uh, somewhat regularly uh, two years ago. Just two and two thirds innings over there prior to today, and 15 innings last year. But showed a uh, an aptitude for playing over there when he got regular work over there a couple years ago. He'll get more regular work there this year. Backing up Bell. Richard Rodriguez starting to loosen in the Pirates pen. Williams has allowed one hit, but he has thrown more balls than strikes today. Isn't that something? He's walked five. Yet he's struggling to complete five. Got the first man. A walk, a double by the opposing pitcher, a walk, now a throwing error. And after the sack fly tying it, he's behind 3 0 on Carlos Santana. That's the one thing I've noticed, and I, I mentioned it earlier how Pirates pitchers in this series have really stayed out of the strike zone against a guy like Santana. Signed the big free agent contact, contract has big time power, and he doesn't chase. I've noticed that too. He doesn't go outside the zone very often. Big walk totals in Cleveland. Getting that borderline strike. 
I shouldn't upset him too much. You think, you know, for the guy, the big free agent contract, the guy can hit the ball, ballpark, drive in runs. I think he'd want to hit in this situation. Three one from Williams. Man, what? You got to wonder. What's I mean, this guy, for? his guy goes up there with two outs and a runner on and tries to bunt. His last time up unsuccessfully. Now he's up there with the go ahead run at second base with a full count and takes a fastball down the middle. Or a 3 1 count, even better. Did I say 2 1? You said full count. Yeah. Oh, it was I meant 3 1. Yeah. To make it go full, it's a fastball right down the middle. What else are you looking for? And he throws another one and he strikes out. Now that's a pretty gutty sequence there for Williams, but the Phillies get the two tying runs. hundreds of feet into the air and here at the ballpark they have a little target practice for fans and I took Stephen Brault and his father Dan here on this father's trip to take target practice with the hot dog launcher and boy did they have a good time doing it. Both Stephen and his father Dan went five for five hitting five of the seven targets so he took it to the wiffle ball field. Yeah to make a little tiebreaker had a little home run derby father and son playing a little wiffle ball just like it was in the backyard. Joe and Rock they had a good time up there living like kids just a little bit on this final day of the father's trip this weekend to Philadelphia. That's nice and uh, I know the Pirates are going to want to treat him to a victory here today to try to lift their spirits. Uh, they still have been enjoying themselves been spending time with their kids. It, they don't get a lot of that. But the Phillies have put a damper on things. There's a lot of the dads. Many of whom with all the new faces on the Pirates. Uh, Experiencing this for the first time. So after the Phillies tie it, Pirates have to go back to work trying to get a lead against Nick Pavetta. Polanco starts. Marte and Dickerson to follow. Trying to get hot again, Gregory Polanco. Easy play for Kingery. And let's check in with Paul Alexander. He's got a game break for us. Thank you, Paul. And uh, here, are two, two. Mariano getting another 
chance to start with Detroit. Now again, uh, third time through the lineup, Pavetta does not throw a lot of fastballs. More likely to go soft. Throwing a breaking ball there. And you've got ahead 0-2 with uh, neither pitch close to the strike zone. Well, as a hitter, if you have that information, how do you process it? Well, you you, you can't be as you can't sell out against the fastball the third time through. Um, that doesn't mean you can't look for it, um, especially earlier in the count. But I, you know, you could look up in the zone, assuming that if, if the pitch is up in the zone, it's either a fastball or a hanging breaking ball, which will help you stay on it. Um, you know, pitching a little backwards here after going breaking ball, breaking ball, then a fastball pretty much down the middle and had Marte probably looking for something soft. But, um, it, you, you can't go up there just selling out, uh, expecting a fastball early in the count. And by selling out, you mean what's starting to swing a little early, or pretty much, yes. No. We'll see if the Pirates can have that approach, and if Pavetta stays with his tendencies. Yeah, he said, you know, when, when, when a hitter is geared up for fastball or selling out for a fastball they're probably looking to pull it get the barrel head out and and again with um, with the information you have and knowing that fastballs only come out of his hand 41 percent of the time the third time through your sights should at the very least um, shift towards the opposite field which will help you stay on the breaking ball recognize the speed and spin of the breaking ball if you're up there looking to pull a fastball third time through when he doesn't throw many fastballs, he's, he's, he's going to get you. He's going to get you out in front. He's going to get you in the hole. Marte spoiled a couple of fastballs here. Every fastball that he's seen, he's fouled away. Bounce the Uncle Charlie. This will be the eighth pitch coming. And shoots it through. Marte with a one out single. We we're talking about Francisco Liriano a moment ago. He's not going to be part of the rotation that the Pirates will see as we look at our Nissan road ahead as the Tigers come to Pittsburgh for a Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday series. We have the coverage for you here on the ATT Sports Net with Cool Tyone and Nova against Zimmerman, Boyd, and Michael Fulmer, who was very good against the Pirates. Back in Detroit. There's part of the Pirates rotation. Marte with six steals. On the verge of moving into the top ten all time for the Pirates. Andrew Knapp stands in his way. Marte is going to try to find a pitch to take off on, try to get into scoring position. Six steals and eight tries this year. And foul. And you would think this would be a good situation for Corey Dickerson. Yeah. Marte with speed at first. You know, he's got the attention of Nick Pavetta. And uh, if they're afraid of Marte trying to steal second base, Dickerson would think would see or have a better chance of seeing a fastball.
Drew will walk his last time. Martin not running. Slide step at that offering. They're not going to steal a base there. And it, as quick as he was on that last pitch, a little slower the first pitch to Dickerson. He's running. And it's just some bad luck. Double play ends the inning. And we're still knotted at two. On Friday Night Rocks and a part of the American Idol uh, moving into the final rounds now. And uh, congratulations to her to uh, reach that Stay pinnacle and hopefully uh, keep on going. Uh, the Munhall native uh, delighting us with uh, her tunes last year and uh, now on American Idol. She'll be on tonight. And so make sure you tune in and vote for her and try to get her farther along with uh, American Idol. That's really great. Impressive. Right? I mean the thousands and thousands of contestants. I mean to be down to the final 14. Wishing her all the luck. She sang the national anthem did Gabby Barrett. At PNC Park uh, last year 2017. Really is a special talent and hopefully She's already made us proud and hopefully continues on. This goes to show you like those reality shows and, and even the winners of those shows you never hear from again sometimes and how difficult it is in that industry. No doubt. Well we're going to try uh, to entertain you with some more great music on Friday Night Rocks. It debuts this Friday as the Pirates will host the Cardinals. Latecomers will be the featured act. Our music for Friday Night Rocks here on AT&T Sportsnet. Here Williams gets a quick out starting the inning at 83 pitches. And ahead 0 and 2 on the cleanup man Hoskins. Trying to hang around long enough mm -hmm. to be in position for his fourth win. I like it. Go upstairs the second time he's punched out Hoskins. So two up and two down against Williams. We're talking about the uh, Cardinals coming to town this weekend. And on Saturday, the uh, Pirates will host the Cardinals at 7.05. Then the postgame Zambelli fireworks show.
presented by 93.7 The Fan. Get your tickets. Go to Pirates.com slash fireworks. Got to have some much better weather this week at home, too. So look forward to having you with us out at PNC Park. A few curveballs today from uh, Trevor Williams. I think that's the third one he's tossed today. Nick Williams strike him out throw him out double play he was the strikeout victim he is last time around and Gar Santana starting to loosen Williams is a spot in the order comes up fifth in the seventh it may be one of those things where the pitch count May do him in. He has not thrown more than 97 pitches so far in his four previous starts. I like to see them go upstairs. I don't see that a whole bunch from Trevor. Softly hit. And a one, two, three inning. Nice rebound from Trevor Williams. Pirates coming about in the seventh. And they get the lead back. Two earned runs given up after just uh, after six innings against the Philadelphia Phillies. And here we are in the stands joined as always or most days when Trevor pitches by Richard Williams, his father. What do you think? How do you assess this afternoon? Well, last time you were here it was a no hitter and this time it's a one hitter. So you can keep coming back, Robbie. <laughs> hey, I'll consider that an open invite. So father's trip, you're sitting here amongst 20 fathers. The most have ever attended in the six years. Clint Hurdle has done this father's trip. How do you describe the experience from year to year? It's been great. The, I mean, the, the Pirates uh, staff and Clint Hurdle and management has been absolutely wonderful to us, opening their doors, making us feel so welcome. Uh, it's just been a wonderful, wonderful uh, experience with these fine gentlemen. Solid single by David Fries to get things kick started here as Carl Moran steps up to the plate. All right, John Wayner a couple innings ago said, hey, you look like a scout the way you're taking notes. What can you tell us about what you chart and what it is that are on these sheets of paper? I'm, I just chart. I've been charting for years, 20, 30, 40 years. Uh, and I'm, it keeps me in the game, keeps me knowing what's going on, keeps me focused. Uh, otherwise, I'd be a wreck, an absolute wreck. You said you were a wreck last time I talked to you. I was a wreck last time because he's pitching a no-hitter. <laughs> What was that conversation like after he exited the ball game? He threw six no-hit innings. You knew it was the end of it, and let's be realistic. It was the right move to pull him from the ball game at that point in time. Even Trevor agreed with that. He was living on the edge, giving up a lot of walks. But what's that phone conversation like with you and him afterward? Well, 
Uh, it was fun. I mean, he, you don't throw a no-hitter. It's hard to throw a no-hitter. It's hard to, to throw uh, in the major leagues. But uh, we, we talked, and he was more upset about the five walks, which he'll be upset today about his walks uh, because he doesn't like walking people, and, and the one walk came in. So uh, he'll be really upset. Well, he'll be upset about the walks, uh, but uh, I can't, I'm confident one hit he'll, he'll be happy with that. Certainly he will. My next question to you is this. I would venture to say that every dad, when their son is on the mound, is nervous. Do you ever talk about how you handle it? Well, it's funny how the fathers have talked about all this. Um, some fathers, like the Brawls, uh, his he's totally different. They're they're comfortable with it. Uh, and some when the bat, some of these are opposition players. When their sons at the bat, you don't want to talk to them. Uh, when I'm uh, with Trevor's on the mound, you don't really want to talk to me. Uh, but uh, everyone handles it differently. Uh, for me, uh, I'm. I'm Inside, I'm really, really nervous. Hey, now, just so you know, we're going to let you go with this, but if we start to get some runs here and Trevor goes on the record as eligible to win, we're going to capture a reaction on live television, okay? <laughs> Thanks. I'll, I'll, I'll prepare something special for you, Robbie. <laughs> there you go. Joe and Rock, you heard it right here, so be prepared. Let's hope the Buckos get some runs. We'll get this man's reaction. Yeah, Richard Williams is really funny. I, I like talking with him this week. It's been fun. Moran with two strikes. Yeah, let's hope Williams can be in position for that fourth victory. Only Max Scherzer in the National League has four. And the way Williams has pitched today, even though he's had those five walks, just the one hit, good enough to win. But Elias Diaz uh, helping him out with a two-run home run. But of all people, the pitcher, that's twice this year that a lone hit off of a Pirates pitcher Tyon during a shutout and then here Williams yeah. the pitcher with the hit unusual. So that's going to be it for Pavetta. Phillies make a pitching change here in the seventh. By Barrel Automotive. Our service centers are now open evenings and weekends. Visit BarrelService.com for more. And by Allegheny Health Network, official medical provider of the Pittsburgh Pirates and fans like you. Let's go, Box! 2 2 game as the Phillies make a double switch. With Mercer coming up, Dubrai Ramos. Coming in, and Aaron Altair, the new right fielder. And he will be due up fourth in the bottom half of the center. Batting in the ninth spot. We're almost a couple of big benders facing Mercer here. and. Nine appearances, a 104 ERA, 11 punch outs. Opponents hitting just 172 against them.
Jeffrey started the inning with a single now one out. Pirates took a lead scoring twice in the fifth Phillies answered in the bottom half. Even like I mean that might look like a hanger to you when you see that breaking ball that, that big breaker over the top but the, as a hitter I mean this thing has so much downward movement it almost looks like it's over your head when it leaves its hand like it's there's no way that ball's going to end up in the strike zone. Throws a lot of those uh, slurves or breaking balls whatever you want to call them. I mean that looks more inviting to hit I mean when he throws it. It starts almost like you know it leaves his hands. It looks like it's going to be in the strike zone and breaks in front of home plate. I mean it's a big breaker. I mean you'll see how fast that thing just darts wow. down. It starts off like it looks like it's going to be maybe, maybe elbow high and <laughs> it bounces. Well, we'll see if he has enough confidence to throw it here. Three two. He's running. He's got to get back. And Hernandez will record the second out. He did go to the hook, and that's what Jordy. He's telling Diaz as Diaz goes up to the plate. He's throwing all hooks. Big curveball. 3 2 curveball. Last time around, Elias Diaz providing the Pirates with their two runs. Took that breaking ball. <laughs> he said, I could hit a curveball. Yeah. That was quite the blast. Second of the year for Diaz. Uh, and you could venture a guess that Pavetta, Pavetta has never thrown a curveball that was off the plate inside that, that left the ballpark for a home run. I mean, that's so unusual to see. I mean, it was about five maybe six inches inside great swing hitting 474 now in his 19 at bats nine for 19 he has two of the five Pirates hits today there's Francisco Cervelli getting the start off today. Philly fans even boo miscues in the in the stands as a fan clanked that foul ball. Josh Bell would be next. He would bat for Trevor Williams if Diaz can keep the inning going with two outs and a ball and two strikes on him. Almost strikes him out. Lead off single left stranded. Time to stretch, still tied at two.
distributed in any form, and the accounts and descriptions of this game may not be disseminated without the express written consent of the Pittsburgh Pirates. And on the UPMC scoreboard, it's the Pirates 2 and the Phillies 2 as they get playing uh, the game six over across the parking lot here. And let's see how we got here this afternoon. Trevor Williams with a lot of swing and miss stuff today. Although the five walks helping to lead the Phillies to run, but for Williams, they seven strikeouts. Gave up just one hit. That was to Nick Pavetta, the opposing pitcher. And he got some offense behind him. Elias Diaz with his second home run off Pavetta. Two hits today for Diaz. That gave the Pirates a 2 0 lead in the fifth, but in the bottom half of the inning, it was Pavetta at the plate. The only hit off Williams. Double, just fair. That scored Knapp, who walked. And another run coming in on the sack fly by Cesar Hernandez. Pavetta able to rumble home. And that's how we stand 2 2 as we begin the bottom of the seventh. Pirates hoping to avoid a four game sweep here in Philadelphia. And for the third straight day, the Pirates turn to Michael Feliz. Feliz uh, in 10 appearances, a 5.63 ERA, 11 punch outs, four walks. Opponents hitting 219 against him. Just the one home run allowed. And a big one yesterday. Now Feliz yesterday surrendering the go ahead home run, a three run home run to Reese Hoskins. You won't have to face him today. Kingery Knapp. And then the pitcher spot. Do up here in the Phillies seventh. And the only runs that Feliz has allowed this year came in his first outing and in his last outing. So trying to get a fresh start. Keep this game tied. How about that swing, by the way? <laughs> he threw the first pitch uh, down and away at 97 to Kingery, then decided to throw a 1 0 slider. That's selling out as um, Kingery chased the slider to way out of the zone, and that slider hanging a bit, but still coming up empty. Chasing that slider with a lot of movement. And let's go back to our studios. Paul Alexander with a game break. Yeah, very scary indeed, and thank you, Paul, for that. Mark has a hard thrower, too. As is Feliz on in relief. Andrew Knapp. Really, you kind of pointed to that. That was that turning point in that uh, fifth inning where he drew that four pitch walk. Yeah, I mean, and, and it was just an interesting sequence to me as he comes up empty with another fastball way late and, and it was because he was late on the Trevor Williams fastball on both a 3 1 and a 3 2 pitch back in the second inning and, and just to see first pitch slider second pitch change up third pitch change up. Uh, I mean that that and they were all out of the out of the strike zone and that's what kind of caught me is a, a little strange because Trevor Williams is always pretty aggressive with the fastball. And, and was able to get it by him twice. Today through uh, 60 of his 92 pitches were fastballs. And, and it was a four pitch walk. I mean it, all those off speed pitches were down and out of the zone and he threw a 3 0 oh, sinking running fastball that ran off the plate for ball four. A fanatic working his magic. And Feliz doing the same. Back to back strikeouts. 
Arm still looks fresh working on the third straight day. MLB at bat that's your number one Pirates app you can customize your experience to catch every moment all season long get Pirates home screen icons and features such as the MLB dot com uh, TV game of the day pitch tracking and in game highlights live radio broadcast stats news and more download MLB at bat today. It's a home run or a <laughs> foul back. In that case. Imagine being four years old and seeing this big green thing coming. <laughs> that uh, yeah. Be, what is this? I guess fun for some, frightening for others. Altera came in on the double switch. Batting for the first time. Tommy Hunter just activated today from the DL. That's a fair ball. And it gets by Dickerson and rolling around the corner. Altair is on a tear. He's in with a triple. Two out, three bagger puts the Phils in business. A lot of times you'll see uh, late in the game, especially. A tie game, one run game. If you're up a run, uh, a lot of teams decide that the guard against the double. You'll, you'll see the outfielders play deeper to keep the ball from getting through in the gap. You'll see the, the, the corner infielder, especially on the pull side, guarding the line, uh, especially with two outs. Um, because you figure if you can prevent them to hit a double, they need three hits to score. Um, and the part's not guarding a line. And a big three bagger. Altair hitting 104 prior to that hit. Yeah, it's a tricky little fence out there down both lines. Whereas, you know, if it does, it, some balls hit the fence and it kicks out in the left field, other balls uh, go into that corner. And, and again, when you're late, um, late in the ball game, I mean, it's a double no matter what. It, it, it may not matter if he's on third or second. Base hit in the outfield, probably going to score. But I would say, I would think as a corner infielder, you'd, you'd want to kind of guard against, especially in left field, that ball getting into the corner because it's not going to be more than a double. If, if, if you take away the corner and say you go and not anticipate it hitting off the fence, because if it hits the fence and you're going towards the corner and it comes back out, you're probably going to hold him to double anyhow. 2 2 in this 2 2 game. Number nine hitting Crawford. Got to watch that slider in the dirt, right? Definitely got to be able to block it. I mean, you have enough confidence in it. I mean, it, I guess. I'm sure most catchers are, are plenty confident enough that they're going to, especially in this situation, go ahead and run third base. That if they're going to call a slider, that they're going to be able to block the slider and keep it in front of them. The other part of it is, does the pitcher have enough confidence in that catcher uh, to where, you know, I, I mean, I got to throw my best slider. I got to make sure I bounce it here. Is my catcher going to be able to block it? Because I, I think sometimes you'll see that. Um, Every now and again, where it may be a slider count, and you, know, you figure you can get a swing or a chase on a slider, at least try to get a guy to bite. Um, and, and the pitcher sometimes doesn't convict, you know, doesn't have enough conviction in to bounce it and ends up hanging it and leaving it up. That's the one thing you definitely want to guard against. 3 2. Roped, but foul. Crawford, when he's had these situations, 5 for 11 with men in scoring position. He's seeing the slider, that's for sure. I mean, he's a little bit out in front of it, which is understandable because of the velocity, but he's not being fooled by it. He's taken a couple that were just out of the strike zone. He's hit a couple, but pulled them foul. This will be his eighth pitch, you'll see. 
And he's called out on strikes. And Crawford, the young shortstop, he is furious, but uh, that looked like it got a good part of the strike zone. Top Certainly zone. enough. Yeah, top of the zone, outside corner. And it stays 2-2. Two -two. And two, two, a two, two score here in the eighth inning. Big important. Gabe Kapler, letting Ramos start the inning and uh, waiting for Adam Frazier to be announced as the pinch hitter. Frazier, who hits lefties very, very well. Uh, so uh, Kapler going to go to the pen here. Chevy dealers and by Levin's, the official furniture and mattress supplier to the Pittsburgh Pirates. For the best quality, service, and value, shop Levin's. Let's go, Fox! Gabe Kepler now wanting to go with Tommy Hunter, who had been warming last inning anyway. That uh, is very interesting. Um, I don't know. I don't understand. Well, he waited for Frazier to be an announced as the pinch hitter and then goes with another right handed I mean, it's pitcher. Just, it's perfectly understandable if you want to get a lefty up there and get a left on left matchup to take a righty out to bring another righty in is just drawing attention to yourself as far as I'm concerned. That didn't make any sense. Yeah. Hunter uh, 
first time pitching this year. And a hamstring injury. In the last season. 61 appearances, a 3 and 5 record, a 261 earned run average. Opponents hit just 202 against the big righty. Signed a rich two year free agent deal with the Phillies. As uh, the price of relievers gone up this offseason, Rodriguez flies out quickly, two outs on three pitches. Pirates will begin a three game series at PNC Park against the Cardinals starting on Friday at 7.05. If you're one of the first 20,000 fans through the gates, we'll take a little Pirates umbrella thanks to Highmark Blue Cross Blue Shield. Pirates Cardinals, Friday, 7.05. Go to Pirates.com for tickets. Longo hit this in three trips today. Two two tie eighth inning. That's a strike. <laughs> of course. I mean it was right there. I mean it's, it's in the zone. I mean uh, pretty good pitch to hit actually. In her third above the knee. Might be the first strike I've seen hit the backstop on a non swing. Wasn't presented well, <laughs> but uh, Nick Lentz standing his ground, and he's right. He was in the strike zone. So just didn't seem like. It. I don't know if Clint Hurdle's ever seen that before, <laughs> taking strike to the backstop. But hey, it was in the strike zone. Catcher does not have to catch a pitch for it to be a strike. But I mean, it, we see it almost on a daily basis. Uh, whereas if, if a catcher presents a pitch better, um, they'll get more calls. And there's a lot of times, and you'll see it every game, where a catcher doesn't catch the ball very well, and uh, for whatever reason, he might be set up inside. And if he catches it outside his body, it's almost always called a ball. Um, even though it might be right down the middle. I mean but that pitch caught a lot of plate and rarely will you see it be called a strike. Hunter in his first inning with the Phillies this year sends down the Pirates in order. Still 2 2.
I was hoping to see some cheesesteaks. That looks good. That looks good. Sausage and peppers, mm -hmm. too. You know what I like on my uh, sausage and peppers? Mustard. Cheese Whiz. Cheese Whiz. Mm -hmm. Of course. George Contos. Nine innings. Nine appearances. A couple of homers. A couple of walks. A couple of strikeouts. He'll face the top of the order, Cesar Hernandez, who has made some solid contact today. Santana and then Herrera. Hard hit, but right on the ground, the second. And one out for Contos, who pitched on Friday and earned the loss. Only time that he has pitched in this series. He gave up a run scoring triple to Herrera, who stands on deck. And he was on the mound during that wild play where the Phillies had two men aboard. And both ran into Ouch on the same rundown, or, you know, from third to home, from first all the way between second and third for Hoskins. Where seven different Pirates players were involved in making those two outs. Crazy. Seven of the nine fielders. It's a strike call. Now three balls of the strike. The Santana tried to bunt his way on with two outs back of the third inning with a man aboard. But usually a. More of a power hitter. He's gotten off to a slow start this year. And started to pick it up a little bit in this series. And that pitch left up middle. Santana can't center it up. Big shift on now with two strikes on him. Hits right into it. Plenty of time and two outs. Two big outs. That's what you want. You're not overpowering George Contos. So to throw that cut fastball. With the left handed batters to pull it on the ground. That's what you want. Get the righties to pull it on the ground. The objective. He was one of the best at, at getting hitters to pull the ball last year. 17th highest out of anybody that threw 50 innings last year. So that's really any regular reliever, all starting pitchers. He was pretty successful at it. Herrera 0 for 3 today. But had that triple against him back on Friday. He's also homered in his career against Contos, two out of three. Lifetime. And a couple of wild swings. And that's what you see sometimes. Some guys go up there, they want to be the hero. They want to get the big home run late in the ball game, in a tie game. And, um, you know, Herrera, too. 
Big, big swings. I'm sure thinking of just hitting a ball in the seats. Let's see if that approach changes now that he has two strikes on him. Herrera hit 14 home runs last year. On the board for the first time today. Stems that on base streak. And um, again, Diaz, uh, we saw this when Trevor Williams was on the mound before the pitch was thrown. He's pointing out in front of home plate like, let's bounce this, bounce it. And he left it up a bit. Now he's got to face the Phillies' toughest hitter. Reese Hoskins today has struck out twice and walked. That was all against the starter, Trevor Williams. Williams went the first six, gave up one hit, walked five, and struck out seven, gave up the two runs. Two outs here in the eighth. Now the Pirates in no doubles defense. Oh. Upper part of the zone. Outfielder is deep. You see Colin Moran right on the, the line at third base. He's right there. Herrera with one steal. Stole eight last year. And Moran has to go a long way guarding the line, and that allows Hoskin to reach. Can glove it cleanly. Well, that's the, frust the frustrating thing about it. I'm sure George, George Contos thought it was a, an easy ground ball, but when you when you guard against the double and you play close to the line. You can't defend everything. No. But again, yeah, it, it takes three consecutive hits to score that go ahead run. If you're preventing a double or an extra base hit. First time of the series we've seen the ex-pirate Pedro Florimon. Light hitting infielder. Two on, two outs, two two game eighth inning. Pitch gets him to sky it. And that ends the threat. Two left on against Contos. Ninth coming up in Philly. We're still tied at two.
It'll be Twitter Tuesday, and our feature guest is a starting pitcher throwing on Thursday, and that is Ivan Nova. He's going to take your questions. Use the hashtag Bucks Tuesday. Send him away and ask anything you would like to Ivan Nova. He's a very open and honest guy. There he is, his head obstructed by the uh, dugout rail, but that is Ivan Nova sitting out there. He's going to pitch on Thursday against the Detroit Tigers, Joe and Rock, and uh, he's going to take some questions, and we'll hang out and talk about life, food, probably a little bit of everything with him on Twitter Tuesday, guys. Thank you, Robbie. Victor Arano was not allowed a base runner this year. He's due. <laughs> yeah, he is due to allow many. a base runner. How about many? <laughs> 25 up, 25 down. And that extends into last year. That um, consecutive streak without leave, allowing a base runner. 32 in a row. See their stat that says the last Philly to do that. Rick Wise in 71. Who did it in relief. Because he pitched 12 innings of relief. Wow. In a game against the Cubs. What? <laughs> Was that 1871? No 1971. And Marte grounds a foul. Pirates with five hits today, the Phillies with four. And Gar Santana. The lone pirate loosening. Pirates do not score and they can hold the Phillies. They can reserve Felipe Vasquez for when they do uh, take a lead. Right now, just wait for the Pirates score a run. They'll score a run, he'll heat up in a hurry. I think if the Pirates can get a base runner against Toronto, remember he has not worked from the stretch really. I guess it doesn't have a big windup anyway, but he hasn't worked with man on all year. I wonder it's if amazing. how yeah. that would you know affect him. I mean we're three weeks in more than three weeks into the season now. You know, might he you know, be a little flummoxed, especially if it's Marte. If Marte gets on, you know, the threat of him running. Not that he hasn't dealt with hundreds of base runners in his life, but it's been a while. Might make it interesting. Might take giving him a good at bat. I mean, and we saw him the other night. And you look at the stuff, and you and you know, it doesn't look like it's overpowering. It doesn't look like he has like the nastiest breaking ball in the world. Um, I know he has faith. I, I was thinking about this streak the other night because. I forget who he had. He had somebody 3 2, threw a breaking ball 3 2, got the out. So he's not afraid of uh, being a little unconventional. Right to Kingery. So and a high throw allows Marte to reach. And that's how it starts here in the Pirates' ninth. It'll be an error on Kingery. Mm, that good speed uh, forces you to do things you're not accustomed to doing. Kingery rushes the throw. He knows he has to get rid of it. Has to be accurate. The second baseman in the minor league solely has played all around for the Phillies. Mm, Any time that uh, Marte reaches over the plate and hits it off the end of the bat, it's a, it's a, it's an adventure. It's something that uh, you have to do everything right to throw him out. He gets out of the box so well. And Corey Dickerson. That shows you how amazing that streak was for Arano. I mean, even a play like that, that is a base runner. He had retired 32 in a row.
Pirates have their best base runner in terms of speed on at first here to lead off the ninth inning. Three point nine seconds Marte got down the line on that ground ball. Thirty one point two feet per second. Some good math right there. Thank you to Statcast. That's like uh, Bo Jackson, Deion Sanders back in the day, right? Uh, I don't know. I'd have to. Know. Those guys had sub four times. He's running. And that high throw, and Marte is in with a stolen base. Number seven for Marte. And he moves into a tie for 10th place all time on the Pirates stolen base list. A big time here in the ninth inning. Pretty good jump. Doesn't look in. Head first slide. Not a good throw. Good pitch to go on though, the breaking ball. And in scoring position with nobody out. Pirates led briefly in the fifth. Trying to take the lead here in the ninth. Left it up. But Dickerson drops it toward the shadows for the first out. You want to try to get that ball to the right side. Pull the ball to move that runner up 90 feet. Morano not allowing Corey Dickerson to do it. That changes the complexion of the inning. Now Vasquez starting to loosen in case the Pirates do indeed take the lead here in the ninth. David Freeze, one for three today. Marte with very good speed, a base hit to the outfield, likely scores him. Shadows now creeping out over home plate. Do you think that has any effect at all on the hitter? Not yet, nope. I think it's just fine. I mean, uh, when it gets rough, I think is when the, the, the shadows cover the hitter and the pitcher when when the pitcher is throwing from dark with a bright background. But I mean as long as it, you know, the flight of the baseball is in the sun you can see it just fine. You've already committed to your swing. Yeah, no reason to not recognize it any differently now than the beginning of the game. Marte at second with one out. An excuse me swing. Marte has to retreat. Even halfway in case that ball drops. Because it, it almost like a check swing. David Freeze didn't finish his swing there, so I'm thinking, boy, that, that, that has a chance. It has a chance to fall in, but I think he got too much barrel on it. Um, you know, watch how abbreviated the swing is. And it looked like it hit off the end of the bat. I'm surprised it carried that far. The strength of David Freeze, because off the bat it looked like it was going to fall in out there. Covered a lot of ground. They walk Moran. Put runners at first and second. Morano face the right-handed batting Mercer. Ripped a double back in the fifth. Pirates got it. the error committed by Kingry to allow Marte to reach. He stole second and was there with nobody out. He's now there with two away. A good stop by Knapp. A lot of ifs, but I'm just thinking if if Marte was able to get the third and Dickerson could have moved in the third, that would have been an interesting play 
Ooh. on the fly ball to center field with Marte tagging and I think they would have tried it. Oh no question they yeah. would have tried it. And the Phillies despite that leadoff error it doesn't cost them. And the Pirates strand the potential go ahead run in scoring position. Scheduled to start against Detroit's Jordan Zimmerman, who the Pirates saw on opening day. Our coverage starts at 6:30 with Pirates pregame, presented by W.B. Mason. With the game still tied. The Pirates will go with rookie right-hander Edgar Santana. Seven innings, over eight appearances. Opponents hitting just 185 against Edgar. It'll be Kingery, Knapp, and Altair. The trio scheduled for the Phils. Moran standing at the bag at third for Kingery. Guarding the line and also against a potential bunt. Hit this in three trips today. Runs very well. He did not look very good against the slider of Michael Felice. Chased a couple of them out in front of the first off speed pitch from Edgar Santana. Ahead 0 2. No room for error here in the ninth. Diaz is un has been unable to get his pitchers to th bounce that slider every time he asked for it in the dirt. It hasn't quite gotten in the dirt. Boy, don't want to leave it up there. Kangaroo missed it, and the Pirates will take the out. for four. That's a big first out here in the ninth. Now the light hit.
hitting catcher Andrew Knapp who scored the Phillies first run. Four pitch walk with one out in the fifth. Scored ahead of Nick Pavetta's double the Phillies pitcher with his first career run batted in. Both teams scoring a pair of runs in the fifth. It is stood. Ninety five at the top of the zone. Double hit. <laughs> A good slider out in front and hits it again. Well, Santana pitching in one of the Tighter games he has been in in the major leagues. Here in the ninth inning. He got Kingery to foul out, and now he strikes out Knapp for the second out. Yeah, that's bouncing it. Good hard break. That's where you want to throw an 0 2 breaking ball or a 1 2 breaking ball to try to get the chase. Can't hurt you. And the ball's bouncing. Because Vladimir Guerrero is retired. <laughs> Here is Aaron Altair who tripled right down the line. He won't do that to left in this sequence. There's Moran standing in the shadows. Silhouetted there at third. That slider by Santana that uh, Clint Hurdle talked about it last year. It says he has a uh, left turn signal on it. I mean, he's got so much movement. Yeah, it, I mean, we saw it earlier. He hung it and you, could, you can't center it. I mean, it's got so much downward movement and, and it breaks enough away from a righty. Nice Mercer's try. Terry is two for two. Winning run on with two outs here in the ninth. That time came back with a fastball and Terra ripped it for a base hit. Now JP Crawford. 0 for 2 is the number nine hitter today. Altair an average runner. Getting a call there. Pitch looked like it was at the bottom of the strike zone. He looked pretty locked in. Uh, that last at bat, he ended up striking out looking on a pitch that he argued about, but had a pretty good at bat against Michael Felice. Run at first, but two outs. Santana trying to move it to the tenth. Altair has not. Yeah, that prior bat that uh, Crawford thought the pitch was up and out of the zone.
Right to Rodriguez. And we will have a 10th inning. So Santana comes on with a tie game in the ninth, and he issues a zero. A game in the series finale the Pirates and the Phillies go to extra innings 2 2 as we begin the 10th. And Elias Diaz. Who is responsible for the Pirates two runs. Hitting that two run home run in the fifth. As two of the Pirates five hits today the Phillies with five hits today. One out. Toronto pitched a scoreless ninth, worked around an error where Marte stealing second and him in scoring position with nobody out. Pirates could not bring him in. And now Bell did not start today, gets a chance to put the Pirates ahead with one swing of the bat. Bell's first pinch hitting appearance. 244 with a home run. Well, good hitters count. See if you can get a mistake, get a pitch up out over the plate, put a good swing on it. Able to sneak it by. Well, gutsy pitch right there, actually. When you think about the, the, the circumstances, extra innings, one swing from Josh Bell, give you a lead. Down toward the corner, fair ball. It's going to be extra bases for the pinch hitter Bell. And he's thinking three. The relay is offline. A triple with one out for Josh Bell. Boy, was that fun to see. Josh Bell, we don't normally talk much about his speed, his base running, but uh, no hesitation there from Josh Bell thinking three as soon as he hit this thing. First hit allowed all year by this Phillies right hander. And, it, and that ball's hit on a line. It's only 330 feet away, as you can see. The ball just kind of sits there under that 
3.30 sign. And uh, it would have been a play, but Hernandez, I don't know if um, that's his real throwing arm or he had a bad grip, but that throw did not have much on it. Infield in for Sean Rodriguez. If he can sneak it past that run in infield. Or yeah, off the deep enough fly ball here. That's the kind of pitch you want to something up in the zone and that uh, little breaking ball just spun up middle. Not a lot of break to it. Against this young pitcher. Trying to give the Pirates the lead in the 10th. Bell with six triples last year. That's a big difference between being at second and at third. Now you're just thinking contact. Put it in play. Bell 90 feet away with one out. Daring with the runner at third. Field in. Anything hard hit more than a step to either side gives the Pirates the lead. Almost hit him. And uh, again, that might just be a purpose pitch. We'll throw it inside. If you take it, it's ball three. Does not mean with Gregory Polanco on deck. Doesn't mean that the Sean Rodriguez will be challenged on this pitch. He can throw you just about anything. You can't sell out on a fastball. And sure enough, another hanging breaking ball. Two strike swing to it. And 83. Calls it off. But not a surprise that um, he went with a breaking ball there with a full count. Three-two pitch, and he strikes out Rodriguez. This was earlier when Bell. Rip the triple and he does like you said once he gets going he's got a little speed. Yeah I mean it, I was surprised really to see him continue on the third around second base and uh, you know, there there was a purpose to that. I mean he thought about it knew there was a one out that was the time to go and um, hopefully he can go that additional 90 feet. It won't be Gregory Polanco with the opportunity to drive him in as they're going to walk him intentionally. That makes it all up to Starling Marte. One for four today. He's one for 12 this year with runners in scoring position. And that's due to come back up. Still watch that ball in the dirt with Bell lurking in the shadows at third. Not underneath it. Well, in the ninth, the Pirates had a man at second, nobody out here. One out triple, and they can't score him. And the Pirates pitching has to hold the Phillies at least another frame.
go by the wayside here. So now they need another zero. And Reggie Crick looking on at his son Kyle who will come on and pitch the 10th. Yeah, he's been uh, really good since being called up from Triple A Indy. Four appearances, three and two thirds innings, six punch outs. Stranded the bases loaded on Saturday. And the Phillies have a man on. Hernandez munches his way aboard to start the 10th inning. That's a good bun. Moran is playing even with the bag. And with the way he hit that uh, off the end of the bat, close to the line, no chance. Santana 0 for 3 today. Walked back in the first inning. We're in the 10th in a 2 2 game. Pirates trying to avoid getting swept in four games here in Philly. Philly's trying for their first four game sweep of the Pirates since 1994. Pirates have had some good pitching for the most part in this series. Unless the uh, Pirates score again, they, they have scored two runs or fewer in six of their last seven, including today. They may still score. And eight of the last ten. Head of Santana. Santana ahead of that last pitch. Take this one. Kirk trying to get it into the 11th. I like the idea of a ground ball with Santana. Hit a couple of them today. There's two hopper at somebody. Turn two. Santana doesn't run great, so certainly can do that. Not really much of a ground ball pitcher per se, but it can be done. And he tried to tempt him. The change up had some pretty good movement running off that outside pitch, but Santana, I mean, it's one thing in this series, he is. Shown a good eye. Oh. Santana you know, routinely walks a uh, oh, hundred times or close to a hundred times, ninety times a year. One of the few power hitters uh, around baseball that has uh, walks and strikeouts near even. Throughout his career, how they see that these days anymore? Are they battling here? Already seen eight pitches. And uh, Kyle Crick showing great command and uh, mixing it up: the breaking ball, the fastball, the changeup. Santana really making them work.
This will be the ninth pitch of this at bat. Jammed him and popped him up. The eyes has the out. And, and that's one of those pop ups who who cares if you catch it. You drop it you get rid of Hernandez and that good speed and put Santana on first. You know. I mean it's hard to think of dropping a ball or not let, or not catching it. You know but that's a perfect opportunity to uh, have a lesser runner out there. And hit all that high, and um, Diaz, you can hear him calling for it. Pretty easy play, but even if he drops it, like I said, it's no, no big deal. You just pick it up and throw it a second. Well, instead, Hernandez uh, with those wheels stays at first. Abubal Herrera singled his last time. Toward Crick. His only play is to first, and he's safe on the error by Crick. He had time. This uh, flyer. He reached back to tag him, but he was well past the bag at that point. Freeze thinks he tagged him, but like you said, Rock, I mean, he was across the bag already. So two on and one out, that's a big difference than a man at second. And two away. And Ray Searage is coming out now. Crick has faced Hoskins one time and he homered off of him last year. And uh, after throwing that ball awry, I'm sure that Crick's heart is pounding a little bit. Yeah, I'm sure. Um give him a little bit of a breather for one, but uh, more of a game plan on. How to attack Hoskins here. Hoskins yesterday. He really was the hero. That three run go ahead home run. That came in the sixth inning. The Phillies never would look back. And the that had erased a two nothing Pirates advantage. And now Crick, who has made the error to put a second man aboard here with one out, has to try to get through him. Hernandez, the lead runner at second. A winning run here in the tenth inning, and he runs well. Our outfielders playing in a few steps. Boy, they're playing way in. I mean, way in to where maybe a routine fly ball doesn't get caught. And that's to try to cut down what a ground ball, right? A ground base hit. To no, I, I mean, to have a chance on a base hit. I can see that's why they're probably why they're a little more shallow than they normally would be with Hoskins up there. And because of Hernandez's speed, right? Yes. Marte ready to throw if needed. And the best arm of the group. And I have now wanted to. Get the breaking ball in there to Hoskins. Good breaking ball, and uh, maybe Diaz wanted it a little further away, but he's 
easily in the strike zone. A bunt hit and an error. That put two on for the Phillies with one out here in the 10th. One two. Hoskins strikes out swinging. Good job by Kyle Crick to get out number two. Dad likes it. Yes that's uh, some good pitching right there with that breaking ball and um, and again they're not in the, the greatest of locations. I mean those are middle above the knee but you could just kind of tell especially that last one that Hoskins took he just didn't look to be in a position to do much damage with it so why not throw it again and uh, way out in front that time was Hoskins. Something the Pirates and Crick worked on during spring training is to slow down that breaking ball just a little bit. And now Michael Franco pinch hitting for Arano, the pitcher. Same situation as the eighth inning when Gabe Kapler went with Pedro Florimon. First and second, two outs. And now going with Franco here. Leaving only the backup catcher Alfaro available here in the 10th. Franco, big power hitter, a lot of swing and miss. Has driven in 17 runs this year. Different does Crick look this uh, since he's been called up in, in spring training? Uh, mm -hmm. A little erratic with the command in spring training, especially the fastball command. Um, but uh, since he's been here, boy, it, his command has been excellent. Two on, two out. And now one and two as he threw it right by Franco. Yeah, a lot of times as a hitter, I mean, you see the first pitch breaking ball, it's in there for a strike, and then you throw the fastball away. And then a hitter might think, well, that's a just a waste pitch to, to come back to the breaking ball. Well, he doubles up with that fastball. 95. Plenty enough velocity to get it by him. Rick trying to send it to the 11th. And Mercer so sure handed. It's the out. It was a tricky hop that he made it look easy and Crick gets out of the jam. 11th coming up here in Philly. Pirates scoring back in the fifth inning and of all people Nick Pavetta the Phillies pitcher with a double that was the only hit off Trevor Williams today and that sacrifice fly scored Pavetta off the bat of Cesar Hernandez nodding the score at two and the Pirates thought they had a good opportunity there Josh Bell pinch hitting ripping a one out triple Sean Rodriguez could not score him with the infield in and then Marte 
was out to end the threat for the Pirates who have had a couple of chances in the ninth and tenth. They need to generate another here in the eleventh. And they will face Yaxel Rios. The next Phillies pitcher the fifth of the afternoon. Soon to be evening. Rios has gone um, appeared in eight games six innings picked up two wins a 150 ERA. He's got Dickerson then freeze and Moran Pirates still have two players on their bench more offense Cervelli. And the Phillies have just the backup catcher Alfaro as both teams with eight man bullpens. Plenty of options for both teams going forward out of the bullpen. Bell knows he's done for the day after his pinch hit triple. I don't think Glass now would be available today throwing 73 pitches on Thursday. Richard Rodriguez, we saw him loosening, so I think he would be available. Dickerson mm -hmm. registering his first hit, so the Pirates have had some opportunities here in the later innings. Yeah, actually, it's a small ball that hasn't been able to come through. Uh, you know, runner on second, nobody out, never moved from that. Wasn't able to get him over. That was in the top of the ninth inning. And then you had the runner at third with one out in the tenth. There is Rodriguez. David Freeze, one out of four. <laughs> now, ball and a strike. Rios just 13 games last year still qualifies as a rookie. Low walk totals. Last year and throughout his career in the minors but not. Once he came up to the major leagues. And fields his position well. That, that, that works as a bunt I mean. Run at second base. Two more cracks at it. For the Pirates to take a lead. A base hit. We'll see if Gabe Kapler issues another free pass. He chose to walk Colin Moran intentionally with two outs. A runner on second back in the ninth. Looks like he's content to pitch to him here. For three with that intentional pass. Hit the ball hard. Back in the fifth inning. Try two there. That big rip. Big hole on that left side. And we've seen Colin Moran go that way. Third baseman. Kingery. Playing pretty much straight up. With the left handed Moran up, but that's the only defender over there.
Tom Moran had the Grand Slam earlier this season. He's not been shy to have some uh, big hits here in his rookie year. First year with the Pirates. He's got Dickerson at second with one out. 11th inning. Rios. Gets him to twist it, foul and out of play. Pretty sure it's a two strike at bat that we saw the other night with Colin Moran just trying to protect on a pitch that was down and away from him. You know, reach out there and hit a little dribbler. To the left side for a base hit. And Rio strikes him out. Pretty good movement on that fastball. Up and out over the plate, running away from Colin Moran. You see the run. Ooh, Not so much sink, but run. Pirates are one for eight today with runners in scoring position. And over their last 10 games, including today, hitting 196 after getting off to that torrid start, getting so many clutch hits. Mercer doubled today. Yeah, Pirates offense has been at two extremes. They, they were really fantastic. Uh, what turns out to, so far to be like the first 12 games of the season and including today the last 10. Eight of 10 uh, two runs or fewer so. They're going to settle somewhere in between. Maybe today. They just need that. One hit, they've continued to mint some opportunities. And a man at second, nobody out in the ninth. Off the glove. That was hit into the middle. Oh, he's safe. Wow. The throw by Crawford allows Mercer to reach in the inning to continue. About that, uh, I mean, that thing was headed towards the middle. I think that goes into center field, and, and Dickerson scores. If the pitcher Rios doesn't get a piece of it there you see and just gets a little bit of glove on it. So that becomes a much easier play there for Crawford and he just fires it high. And the rookie shortstop prolongs the inning Dickerson moved to third. So watching that replay that should be a hit. I think Mercer would have been safe. I mean, it's a bang bang play. Initially ruled an error. And now Diaz who has accounted for both Pirates runs with his home run back of the fifth. He has two hits today. And he has a two out chance here in the 11th inning. The Pirates won their only other extra inning game this season on opening day in Detroit. They also got a second chance in that game. Can they take advantage here. Phil's opting not to hold Jordy Mercer on. Off his glove again but this time right to Hernandez. And that's that the Pirates strand two. In the eleventh, still knotted at two.
second with nobody out. Dickerson popping out. Freeze that little check swing and then Mercer for the intentional pass to Moran. Rounded out. And then in the 10th inning, a one out triple by Bell and Rodriguez could not score him with the infield in. And then Marte made the final out. Dickerson with a leadoff single. And Moran striking out. Diaz with men at the corner after that two out error that uh, may have opened the door. And the Pirates are one for 10 with runners in scoring position today. The Phillies aren't better at all. They're 0 for 5. Both teams have had some missed opportunities, but the Pirates have come late in the game. And it is still tied at two. And the Pirates will make a double switch here with Max Moroff coming in the game and Richard Rodriguez coming on to pitch. Rodriguez was excellent in the opener of this series. On Thursday, six strikeouts, no walks in two and two thirds innings. And Rodriguez now playing short with Moroff at second. Here in the 11th. Scott Kingery 0 for 4. Up to center, delighting those who have stuck around, but Monte waits for it to come down. And one out. It was a little loud. He just got under it. Probably got decent wood on it. Well, you might need another one out. <laughs> I'm running out of room. <laughs> As am I. See, I switched to a digital scorekeeping apparatus here. I've only got uh, room for 25 innings on here. So that's it. Yeah. Let's hope it gets there. No, no. Nap. This is carrying, and it's off the top of the wall. That ball is in play, and Nap around second, heading to third, and he'll be held there by Dusty Wathen. A one-out triple by the Phillies catcher. I'm not sure what that hit to make that ball up. Very top of the wall in that fence. Boy, bounced back. Now look at the top of the wall here, and there's a fence there that is in play. That ball is in play here at this ballpark. It has to clear that little metal fence there. But you would think, I mean, it must have hit the metal uh, post of that fence because my thing is how much that ball bounced, how far it bounced off of there. I mean, that thing came off of there hard. The padding of the Outfield wall comes out from that fence. And you see it hits and then bounces yeah, off the very top of the post. padding. No, it, well, yeah, and, but it hit the post first. That's why it kicked back so far. Well, when it's it hits the, the post, post, it's not a goal. No. And that ball just was in no man's land out there. Nothing anybody could do but just race after it, track it down, and that with his second career triple. And now the Phillies with their best chance here late in the ball game. And that wild play, they are reviewing the play to make sure. And it is indeed a triple. Well, that is the ground rules here in Philadelphia. The call is confirmed. Now the Pirates will have to bring the infield in. Aaron Altair, who has two hits in his two tries as a late sub. Knapp does not run well at third. And Rodriguez with very little major league experience. Pitching with the game on the line here in the 11th. 
Just his eighth major league game. He's waited very long for an opportunity. Finally getting it last season with Baltimore. And trying to prove that he can stay. This is one of those moments for him and for the Pirates. That's a big swing and a miss. Yeah, not like you asked about the, the shadows earlier. I mean, you would think it would be difficult picking up the baseball about this time. I mean, he's in the, the shadow on the mound. And you have some sunlight and your shadow in the batter's box. Infield in the one two. And, and I think that's a good idea to, to three straight breaking balls. Because if, if the ball's tougher to see picking up spin is going to be more difficult. Outfield is shallow. The infield is in. Knapp is at third with the winning run with one out. And the Phillies are going to sweep the Pirates in four games here in Philadelphia. The Pirates had some chances. The Phillies had some. And they cashed in here in the 11th. Left that one up. And, uh, you know, again, we, we talked about it, the making mistakes and situations where you don't want to make them and that's uh, you have a chance for a, a strikeout you want to be able to bounce it and, and it, it happened a, a handful of times today it seems like where the Pirates were ahead of a hitter with two strikes where you want to throw a breaking ball out of the zone and they left it in the zone uh, it, it hasn't cost them much but this time look where the location is I mean that's up inner half and uh, you can see Diaz was touching the ground he wanted it in the dirt and so you don't know if Rodriguez was afraid of throwing it in the dirt with that winning run at third base but boy with a one two count that's a, a good pitch to hit when you're in protection mode and Aaron Altair who was hitting 104 coming into the game goes three for three 